Hi everybody, it's Be the Scientist here, and while I normally bring you science story time, I wanted to show you one of the books that's really meant a lot to me, and I think that you might enjoy showing your kids as well. It's called Not My Idea, a book about whiteness, and it's all about how to talk to your white children about what's going on right now. Some parents think that this doesn't need to be talked about with their children and that it's better just to keep them sheltered from this. But this book really shows that kids know what's going on or at least know that something's wrong and it's better to clue them in on it. I'm also going to be showing my screen uh, full length because these illustrations are beautiful. So you'll just be hearing my voice reading over the screen. So without further ado, Let's check out Not My Idea, a book about whiteness, written and illustrated by Anastasia Higginbaum. In a 1993 interview, Toni Morrison said about racism in America, white people have a very, very serious problem and they should start thinking about what they can do about it, she added. Take me out of it. Those words landed in me as a direct command. I made this book for my own white sons with help from their teachers and mine. It's dedicated to the Brooklyn Free School where my family was first called upon to engage with whiteness in order to dismantle white supremacy. Deepest thanks to Ben Howard, Rev Angel, Kyoto Williams, Loretta Ross, and Yenwu Uwa, Randy Clancy, and Noleka Anderson Radway. When grown-ups try to hide scary things from kids. Oh no, not again. What, mom, what not again? It's usually because they're scared to. Who is that with their hands up and why is that policeman screaming at him? Bang, 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 bang. They want to bury the truth. You don't need to worry about this. You're safe, understand? Uh, no. Our family is kind to everyone. We don't see color. Deep down, we all know color matters. Skin color makes a difference in how the world sees you and in how you see the world. I want to bring my aunt a gift. This will only take a minute. It makes a difference in how much trouble seems to find you or let you be. In stores, in cars, on sidewalks, at school, your skin color affects the most ordinary daily experiences, including which neighborhoods welcome you, so relieved you got here safely. Why wouldn't we? The protests. They're blocking the road. Marchers came to demand justice for the unnamed, unarmed African American. They demand an end to the killings across the nation. Part of a shameful pattern that has claimed the lives particularly of young men of color. Marchered refer marchers reference past victims and a video taken by a bystander. You may get the message that racism is happening only to black and brown people. Breaking news, family speaks out on police shooting. Racism is a white person's problem and we are all caught up in it. Ugh, I can't watch the news. That police officer was just doing his job. Mostly by refusing to look at it. Come away from the TV now. Look, I made your favorite. You can face this. Racial justice. We must step up. Understanding the truth takes courage, especially a painful truth about your own people, your own family. Are you all right? Even people you love may behave in ways that show that they think they are the good ones. Racism was not your idea. 
You don't need to defend it. You can bring your curiosity to learn about it and see that it is true. I'll be over here if you need me, okay? Our shared history. In the United States of America, white people have committed outrageous crimes against black people for 400 years. All along, every step of the way, people who love justice and love each other have been fighting back. Many white people did things they never should have done. They denied opportunities, they denied housing, and they even denied voting rights. Many other white people failed to see the problem with this. They exploited the love and labor of black women. Yes, ma'am. These choices put wealth and power into white hands, homes, and neighborhoods. Some white people joined the leaders of black liberation, like Angelina Grimke and Sarah Grimke in 1838, abol abolitionists, suffragists, and sisters. Julian Bond and members of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee in 1963. And liberation means love and freedom. Here's Nina Simone in 1967. Nuns and fellow marchers on the Selma to Montgomery March in 1965. John Lewis and fellow demonstrators kneel in 1962. And here's a more familiar sight of Colin Kaepernick kneeling in 2017. Racism is still happening. It keeps changing and keeps being the same. And yet, just being here, alive in this moment, you have a chance to care about this, to connect. But connecting means opening, and opening sometimes feels like breaking. Our car is parked over here, love. Uh, mom, I don't feel good. Uh-oh, should I pull over? I need to know what's going on. What, what are you talking about? Why didn't anyone teach me the real history? I do see color. I see yours, mine, and everyone's. You can't hide what's right in front of me. I know that what that police officer did was wrong. Okay, geez, you don't have to yell. Go with your instincts on this one. Racial justice is possible but only if we're honest with each other and ourselves. I see a playground over there. Want to get some air? Yes. Your history's not all written yet. So what do you want it to say? The end. Want to know whose liberation you're fighting for? Your own. White supremacy has been lying to kids for centuries. White supremacy is pretend, but the consequences are real. The truth is much simpler than dangerous versus not dangerous. Whiteness is a bad deal, and it always was. You can be white without signing on to whiteness. For example, Juliet Hampton Morgan was born in 1914 and died in 1957. She was a white librarian who fought for racial justice in Montgomery, Alabama. When Juliet was riding the bus and the white driver would refuse to pick up a black bus rider, even after he collected their money, Juliet would put the, pull the emergency cord and raise H-E double hockey sticks until the driver did his job. This was an act of love for herself and for the community to which she belonged. What she did is called disrupting white supremacy. Grow justice inside yourself like a bean sprout in a milk carton. What if it dies? Just plant it again. 
Never stop planting justice. A strong internal sense of justice will not fail you, even when a lack of justice in the world does. Innocence is overrated. Knowledge is power. Get some, grow wise, and make history. Wow, what a meaningful story. Beautiful illustrations made from collages. Maybe uh, out of all of the recycled goods that you're reusing and uh, going through in quarantine, you can make something similar about how you feel about this. It's okay to be confused, to feel upset or angry. Maybe you miss your friends and you're not sure how they're feeling. Check in with them, make them a card and send it out. But most of all, talk to your grown-ups about what's going on. Ask them questions. It's okay to ask questions that are a little bit uncomfortable. So I'm Be The Scientist, and I'm here to tell you that we're all going to be okay, but only if we all do something about it.